Hello anyone, Mr. Skyson here and welcome back to more Bionic Heart. Maybe a finale, maybe not, because last time we reloaded after a death and progressed the story in a more positive way. Sort of. I mean, less death happened anyway. But Tanya and Helen have met, so who knows how that'll go. Wait a sec. We can know. Let's go! Alright, so when we last left off, we had a choice. Again. Should we tell Helen everything we know about the robot lady, which is that she's a robot lady and that she's here? Or should we not do that thing? Ah, uh, it's a tricky thing, but I think we should tell her. Tanya, I trust Helen. If you trust me, you have to trust her too. Trust all around. Cool. Tanya doesn't answer, but she nods her head. Nonetheless, she doesn't appear convinced by my decision. Nor would anyone in this situation. This is a very tense moment. I tell Helen the whole story. Obviously, she's rather surprised. Yes, by how few details there are, like the fact that she's a robot and that she's here and nothing else, because that's all that we've been told. I understand, but what is going to happen now? Well, I mean, can we keep her? I mean, we can always get a little doggy bed for her, put her up in the corner. Maybe we can set up a new room for her or something. Please, we need a pet. Tanya looks in my eyes. Maybe she would like to tell me something. Maybe in private with me alone? I need your help to locate Nanotech's secret laboratory. Ooh. You mean that thing with the job that I turned down? I mean, technically I know where the secret lab is, but I could probably get killed for mentioning it now. Hmm. I feel we made a wrong choice at some point. I hope that doesn't come back to bite us. S secret laboratory? Uh-oh. Oh, well, now she knows about it. I guess we're all going to die. Yes. I remember a laboratory. Then they moved me somewhere else when I started to live again. I think the safest place for them to hide the laboratory is in the Nanotech headquarters basement. What do you mean by live again? You're an AI or a, a, a ghost in a shell or something to that effect. Weren't you alive to begin with? Well, why do you need Luke's help? Do it on your own! I kinda had to escape there, or die, or whatever they were going to do, anyway. They tried to kill her when she tried to escape. I don't think it would be that easy for her to just go back. I... maybe... I can't. They're looking for me, so I can't just run there without knowing first where the laboratory is located. They are at maximum alert right now. Plus the whole thing with them probably trying to kill her the moment she stepped through their door. Even if she knew where it was, it probably wouldn't go well. Right. Damn, what a crazy situation! But hey, I happen to know where that place is. It'll kill me to tell you, but I know where it is. Dear Helen, you know that you're being watched. Are you a spy? <laughs> Luke, Tom, and you. They've been watching you for quite some time. Why Tom? What has he got in all this? Watched? What do you mean? Be more clear. Well, you work for them. She's your girlfriend. Well, I suppose Tom would be watched because he works for them too. Hmm. Richard is a bastard. He owns half of London, but he wants even more. I am not sure what his real plans are, but I'm sure he has a task force of private eyes and robot guards watching his top employees. Well, he owns half of London, and he has all of that going on. Highly sophisticated robot guards, and is creating stuff like you. My guess is he wants to rule the world, or something to that effect. You know, typical evil guy stuff. But Tom isn't. No, but he is your best friend. Yeah, that was my guess. Ah, uh, true. And Helen... Is here with you. Helen is your... Something or other. I am his partner! Yes, and you need to remember it as well. And she is my pet. Don't mistreat my pet. Hmm, I see. But why would they need to spy on us? Because you know too much. Probably they think that since I escaped, I would try to get in touch with one of their top employees to discover more about myself. That's a fair assumption. And that's exactly what you did. Idiot, you could have been more careful. Also true. And also, I just realized, she's wearing the exact same dress that she was wearing at the start of this story. For somebody who runs a dress store, she doesn't seem to change all that much. 
Also, that can't be comfortable. She's got to be really chilly, especially with all the rain going on. There are many good employees besides Luke, and I was careful. They never noticed me come to his house. Uh-huh. So explain again why you were being chased here and had somebody ripping off half of your face. How did they not notice you coming here? Yeah, I didn't even notice you myself. Well, that's because she was hiding when you were here before. Wait a moment. A few days ago, when I went to Luke's house, you were here already? Maybe. Helen, that's not the... Yes, I was here, but I was hidden. Like I said, she was hidden. And you watched us when we... Maybe. The two remain silent for a while. Helen is embarrassed, but Tanya as well. I... I don't know what to say. But I think we have more urgent matters to take care of right now. Yes, yes, much more urgent matters than a peeping Tanya. Chapter 4. Spy vs. Spy. Oh, that was always a fun series. Two hours later... I said no! I'm not leaving Luke alone with you! Oh, why not? She's paper trained. Helen glares at us, her gaze piercing us like a knife. Oh god, she's pulling a knife on us again. Oh my god. You're so stubborn. Tanya returns the glare, letting out a long sigh. How does she sigh? She's a robot. She doesn't need air. How do you function, lady? Just forget it. Forget what? Who are you? Who am I? Oh god, what is going on here? Helen, listen! I don't know why I'm trying to reason with her. I know her well enough to know she's beyond reasoning now. Yeah, she seems slightly unreasonable, even on a good day. Bit of a commanding sort. Either I stay here with you, or you come back to my place with me. Back to your place? Yes. There's no way I'm leaving you alone with her. Well then. Helen points at Tanya, her frown deepening by the minute. Huh. <sighs> what should I do? It's obvious that Helen won't change her mind, and I don't want to make her any angrier than she already is. Hmm. Choices, choices. I'll have to take her up on her ultimatum, then. It's either here or there. Go to her place. And last time we did that, death happened. Stay here, and maybe death won't happen? I mean, if we're here, then worst case scenario, it's all three of us together. Maybe we can fight off whatever happens. Hopefully we won't have a worst case scenario. Hopefully we won't have two ladies trying to kill Luke. I... I think it's better if you stay here. Really? Well, I mean, you were wanting to move in here anyway, right? She doesn't bother to hide the displeasure in her voice. I mean, yes, I know it's a tense moment, but I'm trying to think of safety here. That's a wise decision. This way I can protect both of you. That too. I mean, doesn't he have a weapon or something of some sort? He could probably do something as well. But yeah, a super robot lady. She can help. I don't need your protection. Helen hisses at Tanya. Um, technically you do need her protection. She almost killed you before, and in a past life she did kill you, so there's that. You'd change your tune if you ran into one of Richard's robo-guards. I step in before Helen can say anything in a weak attempt to minimize the damage. Sounded like she changed her tune to silence for a moment there. Well, what's the plan then? It's late now, so you should get some sleep. We'll work out our plan of attack tomorrow. Plan of attack? Are we going to war? Cool. Fine. Let's go, Luke. Go? Yes, go where? We're just in a small area. It's only got a few rooms to it. You're coming to bed with me. But I'm not sleepy. I wanted to watch more guys punching each other. Helen grabs my arm tightly with one hand and points at Tanya accusingly with the other. Help, I'm being kidnapped. And you will stay here in the living room. Don't even think about coming into the bedroom. But I want to peep again. Of course. I'll stay out here. She's not spying on us, is she? Did you bring extra clothing? Oh, right, the wardrobe. Okay. Helen glances over her shoulder, as if she'll be able to catch a glimpse of Tanya looking in on us from the living room. Peeping Tanya. Ooh. I can at least get undressed, right? It looks like you already have. Don't worry. She's not spying on us. Which I still think is weird, because now you're wearing more clothing than you were when you were wearing the dress. I don't get how that works. I don't understand.
understand how you can be so calm when you've got that... that thing inside your own house. Well, she's a nice thing. She hasn't killed me yet. She isn't as aggressive as you, and she doesn't make high demands of me. For the most part. I just... I like having her around, okay? Yeah, she's a nice pet. What? I said she's a nice pet. Do you not listen? Helen's eyes narrow, and I recognize her expression. One false move and I could be done for. Look out, she's got a knife again. Holy crap, where does she keep getting them from? It's hard to explain. I mean, it's like when you have a pet, you know? <laughs> sure you love it, but not the same way you love a person. But it's still nice to have it around. He is going with the pet angle. Cool. She's not a pet, Luke. Maybe she is. I mean, she's a robot. Just, just forget it. We should really go to sleep. A few hours later... Oh crap. Well, that's not good. What? What was that? Uh, it sounded like a robot, Luke. I wake up to the sound of... something coming from the entrance of my house. It sounded like a robot, Luke. Helen, wake up! Oh, she's dead. I shake Helen's shoulder, trying to bring her out of her sleep. Mm, no... I want to sleep. Hey, not dead. She rolls away from me. Something is happening! Come on, wake up! Shake her violently, man! We must wake her! We can use her as a weapon against the robots! Huh? What are those sounds? Robots! It sounds like robot guards! They're inside! Finally, somebody's taking the hint! Hey, um, do, 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 do. examine wardrobe, I guess? I look at my wardrobe. It's definitely big enough to hide inside. But I don't know if Helen will fit, too. Hmm. Well, sorry, Helen. We've had a good run, but you just gotta go. Uh, examine... Nightst... Wait. Oh, hide in wardrobe. Okay. Examine nightstand. I find my Phaser 3000 in the top drawer of my nightstand. I bought it for personal defense, but I never thought I'd have to use it. Supposedly, it can melt through any metal. Any metal, you say? Like, robot metal? I'm gonna take that. I grab my gun and check to make sure it's in working condition. With this, I might actually be able to help Tanya fight those robots. Cool, let's go fight us some robots. To the entrance! I dash into the kitchen, ready for a fight, but I come grinding to a halt when I round the corner. Forget hiding. We're going in guns blazing. Oh? Why, if it isn't Luke! Welcome to our little party! Oh man, you guys threw a party without me? Also, I'm here to kill you all with my Phaser 3000. Richard? Yeah, how'd you get into my house? I can't believe my eyes. In the flesh! I'm almost finished with Tanya, but I promise that I'll get to you soon. Finish with Tanya how? What are you doing with her? How did you... Yeah, how did you get in here? I've been following you for weeks, Luke. Too bad you never noticed, or you might have been able to do something. Well, we did notice, it's just, uh, you acted before we could do anything. You didn't really follow the rules there, Richard. You. Finally, I'll be able to put an end to your plans. Hello. Why, uh... Why are you in a swimsuit? Preparing to attack! Uh-oh. <laughs> Do you think I can actually be stopped by your robots? Well, you did have your face ripped off before, so it's a fair guess to say that they could do something to you. With my robots? No. But with this magnetic gun? Yes. It's always magnets. Wh what Never wave magnets over robot girls. Richard pulls out a strangely shaped gun and aims at Tanya. I flinch, expecting a loud shot, but instead it emits a series of sound waves. I mean, either way, it's going to be sound coming out of it. It's pretty low pitch, but it has a massive effect on Tanya. She winces in pain before falling to the ground. The sounds of science! I can't... move! Magnets... messing me up... must... speak... like this! Guards! Eliminate her! As the robots move in, I pull out my gun and aim at Richard. There's no other way. Ba blam Melted his head. I pull the trigger, and the bullet lodges itself in his right arm. He drops his weapon with a howl. Luke, you are a terrible shot. You had a big bald head right there in front of you, and you missed. Ah! My hand! Oh, your hand? I shot you in the arm. Man. I really messed you up, didn't I? You don't know what's what anymore. Finally, I can move again. Huzzah! 
Now you can dance for all of us because we're having a party, apparently. Free to move again. Tanya makes quick work of the robots. Or that. That's cool, too. As for you, you're not going anywhere. Okay, I'm cool with that. That's a nice smiley face you have going on. I like when you're happy. Tanya ties Richard to the couch so he can't move. The way he's clutching at his arm, I thought he could have gotten far anyway. Why? It's just his arm. Unless he's, like, bleeding profusely or something. Pretty sure he can still run. Luke, you saved me. Not that he could have run very far with the super fighting robot lady. Tanya throws her arms around me and thanks. But her embrace is so powerful, I'm finding it hard to breathe. Yay, the love. The horrible, horrible love. <gasps> Tanya! Can't breathe. Dying from love. She doesn't hear my muffled cries, but instead begins planting a series of kisses across my face. Sucking the air out of your lungs. Oh god, it's a dead end again. Luke, I love you. And then he dies. Broken spine, asphyxiation, all of that fun stuff. Crumples to the floor. W what Ever since I met you, I felt an attraction. I know I'm not a real woman. Not like Helen. But please, give me the chance to make you happy. Oh, complicated situation. What with the whole trying to move in with Helen, or move Helen in with us, and uh, Helen not liking you. Oh. I, I don't. I whirl around at the sound of a strange noise. Uh-oh. It's Helen, and she's crying. Why? Why everything gotta go bad? We were finally getting something positive going on, and then Helen shows up. Hi. Helen, I... It's not what you think. It's... A party, yes, it's a party. We're all just having a party. It's a fun time. Partying. Yay, party. Um... Police, open the door. Yeah, it's the police. We were partying too loud, so we should go check on those police. Let's go. The sound of pounding on my front door cuts me off. The police? I called them. Uh-oh. Well, that's... Why? Damn. <laughs> I should thank you, you stupid woman. You're welcome. Even in his pain, Richard manages to gloat over the turn of events. Well, he's an evil jerk. They're kind of all about gloating. Thank me? Why are you all looking at me? What did I do? You called the cops during a very sensitive moment when things could go either really well or very poorly. Nobody move. Not moving. Can I move enough to click so we can progress? I'm gonna do that. Don't shoot me. Listen, I can explain. Yes, let Luke explain. You! You're Tanya Vanek. You're under arrest. Why? What? Why? Yes, why? Didn't you know? She's wanted by the police. This woman is a dangerous criminal. Holy crap, I've been harboring a dangerous criminal this whole time. I had no idea. I thought she was just my pet robot. I bought her legally from the pet store just recently. You can't prove anything. A dangerous criminal? Tanya looks shocked at this statement. Don't play innocent. You're a serial killer. She kills cereal? Okay, this changes things. I have a kitchen. Possibly with cereal in it. Hmm. Continue. I... The look in her eyes changes as a flood of memory sweeps over her mind. I remember. The Alamo? She's petrified by this revelation after searching so long for her identity. I have to do something! Remind everybody that you're having a party. She's not that person anymore! I step in front of her to shield her from the police. And then they shoot through you and still hit her. She's a bionic being now! She's different! A bionic being? That's not possible! I can rip her face off and show you if you like. Then tell me how old this wanted criminal of yours is! The officer keeps his gun trained on Tanya as he punches in a few buttons on his PDA. Four years old. Her birth date is May 9th of... 1988? Okay, bit older than four. You see? Does she look like she's lived over a hundred years? I don't know, this is the future. There could be some fancy beauty creams for all we know. He looks at her uncertainly, then back at me. Then he craps his pants because holy crap, there's a 100-year-old lady. No. Robbie, my hunch was right. I found the mountain of evidence at Nanotech's laboratory. Richard is... Wait, what is he doing here? Wait, how did you find a mountain of evidence there? 
Isn't it supposed to be a secret hidden lab? Also, hi again, Tina. Remember me? I'm the guy from before. That, uh, you ran off with my girlfriend for whatever reason? Apparently trying to kill these people. Robbie nods in my direction. That one is Luke Black, the man you were trying to contact. Yes, you contacted me once before in a previous life where people died. Didn't go very well. But hey, you're here now and people didn't die. Well, a couple of robot guys, but they don't really matter as much. Robots ain't people. Good. We can take his statement, too. Although Professor Mark has already told us more than enough. He went to the station and confessed. Oh, cool. Somebody went to the police station. Maybe I should have done that a long time ago and just fixed all of this. What? Don't tell me you believe the ramblings of that senile old man. Hey, now, I'll have you know he's a nice fellow and has an interesting voice. He's not senile. Much. Actually, we do. But even without him, there's plenty of evidence pointing to illegal activities. No one can save you now. Huzzah! Evil has failed again. You'll see. Once we get to the station, I'll... If you're talking about all the officers you've been bribing, we've already taken them into custody. So is it just the two of you now? No! That's not possible! You can't do this to me! That is some very thorough policing. Two officers carry an angry Richard from my apartment. He makes a lot of noise, but puts up very little resistance. I can't say I'm sad to see him go. But you are pretty frustrated over the fact that he just bled all over your apartment. Well, I suppose we need to arrest Tanya as well. Why? Her actions took place a hundred years ago when she was a human. Or whatever the situation is for that. I'm pretty sure it doesn't count anymore. No, she's different now. She isn't a killer anymore. Yeah, she's a robot person, not a person person. Robbie, let her go. Yay! What? Why? She's strong enough to have destroyed those two robot guards! Yeah, in self-defense, not murder. Exactly. Huh? If she wanted to escape, there's no way we could stop her. But instead, she hasn't done us any harm. That is also a fair point. If she really wanted to leave, she could. She could just snap all our necks and walk away. Tina looks at me with a knowing smile. I think it's because she found someone to love. Or that. Robbie lets out a resigned sigh. <laughs> He's like, okay, I'm outnumbered by three girls and one guy that really doesn't want her gone. I'm just going to let this go. That may be true, but what do we say in the report? We can't exactly tell them, oh, sorry, we set the serial killer free because she's good now. Well, you could just say you didn't find her or she was gone already. Don't worry. Let me handle it. Let's go. Uh, okay. I guess it'll be fine. After all, she doesn't look evil. In fact, she looks pretty good. Hey, now. That's my pet robot you're talking about. Robbie, stop looking at her! Yeah, Robbie, stop looking at her. The police clear out of the flat, leaving an awkward silence in the air. Finally, Helen steps forward and asks me the inevitable question. Oh, crap, I'd forgotten about that. Hi, Helen. So, Luke... Do you love Tanya? Oh boy. Crap. I forgot that this would probably be a choice in the end. I don't know, there's a lot of pros and cons here. With Helen, you've already got the uh, history. They've been together for, what was it again? Eight years or so? Some amount of time. But then she's also got that rough personality where she seems very demanding of him. I mean, yes, she's impatient, but she seems very easy to anger. So I'm not really sure. They have the whole history thing. Tanya, on the other hand, seems pretty nice overall. She did kind of threaten everybody early on, I will kill you, but it was because she was scared of what was going to be happening and trying to figure out who she was and all of that stuff. Then again, she's also a robot. Uh, is it like love at first sight? Or, hmm. Because both Luke and Tanya did sort of apparently have an interest in each other from the get-go. While Helen... It seems like things were honestly starting to fall apart between them anyway, regardless of if they got together, like, moving in and all. So I don't really know. But then again, Bionic Heart, it's a romance game of sorts with the robots and such. So let's just go with Tanya for now. It's an ending. Helen, I'm sorry. Wait, before you say anything, I need to confess something. Uh-oh. What you gotta say, lady? Confess something? What are you talking about? I... I don't love you anymore, Luke. 
Well, holy crap, I guess we dodged a bullet. We would have been stuck in a relationship that we would have been miserable in because she would have not loved us. What? How could I? You were always working late and you were never there when I needed you and... and... Hey, now, I was trying to make good on all of that. She's trying to say something, but she can't bring herself to say it. It's Tom, isn't it? Wait, what? From her silence, I can tell I'm right. You've been cheating on me. Well, I definitely dodged a bullet then. I'm glad I'm going with Tanya. I should have known. I'm so sorry, Helen. But maybe this is for the best. Yes, it probably is. We're not going in the same direction anymore. It's good that you met Tanya. I mean, I can sort of see it from her perspective. Again, it's been like eight years or however long it's been, so she probably got impatient with it. And then, of course, what she just listed off, that he's always working, and I guess if he doesn't spend enough time with her, she would sort of grow to resent him. But if you're going to be cheating on somebody, don't, you know? That's not that's just not a good thing to do. Just be upfront about it. Say, I no longer love you. I'm going to go look for somebody else to be with. You don't just go behind their back with that kind of stuff. That's just not right. If that's what you think, then why did you throw all those jealous fits before? Yes, explain that. It wasn't jealousy. It was envy. I was envious of you. Of your body. Okay, I can see that. Sort of. My body? My body is yours, Helen. Oh, are we going that way now? Wh what do you mean? I pattern my body after yours. The build, the size, everything. If you were envious of me, then you should be proud of your own body. R really Helen sniffles for a moment and wipes away a tear from her eye. She looks a lot more hopeful now. Uh-oh, where is this going? Everything feels so surreal. The lives that we'd lived up until now had suddenly fallen apart and come crashing down around us. But we were still happy. Or maybe it was more relieved that the entire mess was over. Yeah, I would say it's probably more the latter than the former because, uh, it's a lot of stress to have built up. And then, of course, having the whole evil guy and his robot guard showing up and shaking all of the things up. I wonder what he's going to do for work now. Will that continue on or does he have to look for something else? Hmm. A few weeks later. Hi, cat. Wow, I forgot you were in this. Meow, I'm hungry. Othello, you must be hungry, eh? Come here. Hey, Othello grew a mustache now. Tanya lovingly pets Othello and then feeds him. It still seems impossible to me. Tanya and I have been living together, and she's a fantastic partner. Yes, much more cheery than Helen was, and a lot less demanding of all of the things. She's still a fugitive, but Tina made sure that she was classified as a not very dangerous threat. <laughs> Which is sort of a joke, because she could easily kill the whole population of London if she really wanted. Yeah, that's true too. But, she's friendly, so as long as nobody ticks her off, we should be good. But she's abandoned the path of vengeance, of anger, and chose the one of love and friendship. Yes, friendship. She became a friend of Helen. Well, yeah, Helen seems to be really into herself, and since Tanya modeled her body after Helen's, I can see how that would work out, Helen. Is like, oh my god, you look like me. I'm fabulous. This seems even more impossible to believe. Yet it's true. Well, looks like we have a good ending all around, though. Nobody knows what happened to Richard. He simply vanished. But now that his headquarter is destroyed, he shouldn't be a menace anymore. I kind of figured that since he's some rich, evil guy, he would probably just be able to pay whatever bail he had and then just make his way on out. Probably just went off to some island somewhere, living it up, living the good life as an evil guy would. Maybe in a volcano or something. Secret layers. My dear, I'm going to take a shower. Helen and Tom will be here in an hour. Sure, I'll take care of everything. Yes, Helen and Tom got married and now they are Luke and Tanya's best friends. They often meet to talk, joke, and in general have a good time together. Cool. In the end... Helen got what she wanted. She got married and she's already pregnant. Tom obviously stopped flirting with other women, knowing well that Helen would get very angry if he did. And pull a knife on him. In the London of 2099, everything can happen. Flying cars, virtual gardens, holographic movies, and in 2099, 
Your lover might be a robot. Gasp. Wait, Futurama did a thing on this. It didn't go well. The end. Or better, one of many possible endings, blah, blah, blah. We've already seen this, but yay! We got an ending where everybody was happy and nobody died. Holy crap. I was just one choice off from getting this ending before. Wow. Just goes to show all it takes is one flip of the coin to change everything. But yeah, overall, I had an interesting time with this. It was definitely fun adding my own unnecessary story bits to things, and the fact that the characters had voice acting was pretty nice as well. It's not something you see super often in visual novels. And while this isn't the best VN that I've experienced, it was still a good time, and I'm curious about the different endings. There is a sequel to the game that came out a couple of years ago, but I don't know if I'll be doing that one or not. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see it. But anywho, this has been Bionic Heart. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you did, then give the like button a tap. And if you want to see more like this or more from me, then give the subscribe button a big thumbs up. I will see you all next time, and remember to stay groovy.